Hi there, you're in the lab with your mate JJ. So today we continue on with our, uh, our sensor robot 20. We, uh, we call this our 20 in 1, it's uh, the Maxitronics Electronic Project Lab. Uh, there's 20 projects in this particular uh, lab and uh, today we'll be doing uh, project number 9 which is the visitor alarm, the visitor alarm. So this is another um, uh, light sensitive project with a CDS cell. What we're going to do is we'll pop you over to the booth and we'll assemble the project and then once that's done we'll bring it over to the bench and we'll have a look at how the circuit behaves. Uh, we'll have a look at the uh, at the circuit with the uh, the oscilloscope and uh, and some multimeters and, and, and things like that. So um, let's get on with it. Here we are in the booth. Now uh, there's two little innovations today. First of all, I, I cleared the board before I started uh, the video so you don't have to sit there watching me unplug the old wires. And the other thing that I've done is I've stuck these, uh, these little wedges underneath the, the board um, and perhaps you notice there's no really bad glare on the, on the, uh, on the board. So uh, I'm not sure how that's going to go stability-wise and angle-wise, but uh, let's give it a go and see how we do. So I'll just throw you over the book cam and let's have a look at what we're building. So this is project number nine, the visitor alarm. <clears throat> what it does, this project is similar to the traditional electric eye. When someone, <clears throat> when when some break, when some breaks the beam of light, <clears throat> something may, or someone. Uh, when someone breaks the beam of light falling on the CDS cell, the buzzer announces the fact by beeping. You can also place the beam close to the ground so that your dog or cat can interrupt the beam. When you finish the wiring, place the robot in the path of a flashlight at a point where you expect people to pass. When they do, the buzzer sounds their arrival. How it works. When a personal pet breaks the light beam, Q5 turns on. <clears throat> Transistor Q1 of the monostable multivibrator also turns on. When Q2 turns on, then Q6 operates. The output of Q2 is fed to the base of Q6, which keeps Q5 cycling on and off. This causes the buzzer to sound. So that the buzzer sounds a few extra seconds after the beam has been broken, Q2 remains on for a time proportional to the value of the 10 microfarad capacitor and the 33 kilo ohm resistor. The monostable sta multivibrator becomes stable even after receiving a turn on signal that changes its output from high to low and then from low to high. If Q5 is suddenly turned off, Q1 goes off and Q2 goes on. As a result, Q1 stays off because the voltage at the collector of Q2 drops almost to zero volts. The 10 microfarad capacitor causes the base voltage of Q1 to drop the same amount as the collector voltage of Q2. Then the 10 microfarad capacitor is discharged through a 33 kilo ohm resistor. Next, the voltage of the base of Q1 increases until the transistor turns on. Q2 is off when Q1 is on. Then Q1 remains on and Q2 goes off again. There you go. So uh, let's cable this guy up. So the first one is 1 to 3 and that's our little power wire. We always leave him in there. And then we've got 2 to 15 which is connecting our um, positive power terminal over to one end of our CDS cell. Of course the CDS cell is the light dependent resistor. Um, the voltage goes down, I believe, as the uh, as the uh, the light goes up. Now 15 to 32. Now 32 is over here. It's the emitter of Q1. So uh, that's 15. The CDS cell again, of course, over to the emitter of Q1. And we've got uh, 15, 32, and 32 to 63. Now 63 is the emitter of Q5. Now we see this all the time, don't we? Tying all of the emitters together and then connecting them to ground. 
sort of the low side of our circuit, I guess you could say. And, uh, and then back over to 38. I find it a bit odd that they, they jump it across the board like that. They go from here to there and then back to there. They could have done that differently. I, uh, I wonder if they had, if they thought about it. I presume they did. I wonder what their reasoning was. 38. 38 to 42. Now 42. Uh, we're tying in our second multi-vibrator block. 38 is the uh, emitter of Q2. And 42 is the emitter of Q3. And then 42 to 48 ties in our other emitter. Um, so that's, that's all the emitters tied together. <coughs> and then we'll probably run that off to... Uh, oh, well, we'll see. Or is it already connected to ground? Yeah, it is. It's uh, not... Uh, no. What are we done? Yeah, okay. My mistake. No, I must have made a mistake somewhere. Oh, of course. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Sorry. Uh, so, number two is our ground. It's the negative terminal of the power supply. And then it's connected to the CDS cell, and then all of the emitters uh, are tied to, to, to ground. So um, I, I confused myself thinking this was positive. Of course, it's not. Uh, and and, and uh, yeah, so far, so good. Okay. So uh, next we connect 5 to 14. 5 is one side of our, um, our, our variable capacitor. So it looks like we're going to be, oh, sorry, not variable capacitor, a variable resistor called a potentiometer, of course. Um, so our potentiometer seems to be in use in this circuit. I hadn't noticed that. There it is. It was part of the tuning. <coughs> okay, good. And then uh, 6 to 61. Uh, 6 to 61. 61 is the base of Q5 and uh, and 6 is what they call the wiper um, the wiper is the middle part of the potentiometer that uh, has its uh, re uh, resistance it's part of the resistance circuit <coughs> so that's 61 and then 7 to 60. So uh, 7's uh, the far side of our potentiometer. Called the control. <sighs> and 60 is our 470 kilo ohm resistor. I'm actually going to use a, a yellow for this one. It's just a bit too long for a blue. And it's sending 7 over to 60, which as I said is the 470k resistor. And then we've got 9 to 65. 9 is our piezo buzzer. So this is going to be another noisy circuit. I'm sorry about that. It's, uh, it's my preference not to have the noisy circuits. Um, 9 to 65. I wonder if that'll work. Not quite. I'm going to use the yellow again. I try not to use the yellows because we've only got four of them. And uh, we've already used two. So this is the third one. Uh, <clears throat> 9 to 65. And 65 is the, uh, the collector of Q6. Connecting through to the piezo buzzer on, uh, on pin 9. And then we've got 65 to 50. Now that's going to be a short one. Um, just connecting uh, that collector 
over to the uh, 1k resistor in the resistor block here. All right, and then we've got 31 to 34. Now 31 is over here, and 34 is over there. So 34 is the 33k ohm resistor connected through to the base of Q2, and 31 is the collector of Q1. <clears throat> and then we've got 33 to 62. Now 33 is the collector of Q1, and 62 is the collector of Q5. Okay. Collector of Q1. Is that right? Sorry, that's not right. I said the wrong thing. 31 to 34, we've done. And then 33 to 62. So that's actually 33 is the base of Q1 uh, over to 62, which is the collector of Q5. There we go. Now, it's usually the base which receives the signal. That's usually the way to think about it. <coughs> So that was over to 62, and then we've got 62 to 72, which is just uh, having our, um, uh, our our 10 microfarad um, uh, 10 microfarad capacitor, the negative side of it, uh, connected up to uh, to the collector of Q5. And we've got 37 to 66. 37 is the collector of Q2. And 66 is the emitter of Q6. So that's 37 to 66. And then we've got 66 to 71. 71 is the positive side of our 10 microfarad capacitor. So, just knocked a wire out there. You don't want to do that too often. So uh, 66 to 71, that's done. And then it's 41. Um, to 67. Okay, we're going to use some of our uh, smaller ceramic caps. So that'll be for uh, the uh, the buzzer. The low capacitors are part of the um, the A stable multi vibrator, which uh, creates the high pitched tone for the uh, for the piezo buzzer. So we've got 43 to 70. 70 is the other side of the other the other ceramic capacitor. So we're just making the, the buzzer here at the moment, connecting the uh, base of Q3 over to the ceramic capacitor on pin 70. And then we've got 45 to 44, 45 to 44, and we're tying all of the, uh, the collectors together via their resistors. which is a pattern you see quite a lot uh, in these projects so far. 45, 44 to 40. And then 40 to 39. Um, So as you can see, that just tied those four terminals uh, together, and uh, they're all the resistors attached to the collectors and the bases of the transistors in multi-vibrator block two. 
and then there's 39 to 8 so these are all getting connected over to the um, piezo buzzer and then 835 where's 35 here it is it's the uh, it's the resistor attached to um, the collector of Q2 so just confirming that that is uh, 8 8 is the piezo buzzer to 35 which is the 1k resistor attached to the collector of Q2 and then 35 to 30 okay 35 to 30 connecting the resistor attached to the collector of two to of, of Q2 to the uh, 33k resistor that's attached to the base of Q1 and then 30 to 29 so this is a, a similar um, connection that we saw uh, in the in the other uh, the other multi vibrator block just tying the uh, the bases and the collectors together through their resistors and then we've got 29 back to 4 so that's uh, the other side of our um, of our power switch so just confirming 29 it's uh, the resistor attached to the collector of Q1 over to 4 which is one side of our power switch I'll just turn that power switch off while I think about it. So uh, then we've got 4 to 49. Now 49 is our 1K resistor over here in the resistor block. And 4 is of course one side of our uh, power switch. So connecting the power switch here over to the 1K resistor over here. And then we've got uh, 49 to 59. Now 59 is our 470k resistor. 49 to 59. Connecting the 1k resistor and the 470k resistor. And then we've got 46 to 68. Now 46 is here, the base of Q4. And 68 is one of our ceramic capacitors. So it's just putting the uh, the the A stable multi vibrator together. And this is the A stable multi vibrator that creates the tone for the piezo buzzer and we got 47 to 69 now 47 is the collector of Q4 and it's connected to 69 which is uh, the high side of our um, ceramic capacitor connecting the, the, the collector of Q4 over to the ceramic cap to complete our a stable multi vibrator which controls the pitch of our buzzer. <sighs> and then 69 to 55. So that's just wiring in one of our um, our 10k, well our only 10k resistor on this side of things. So that's 55 uh, and 69 is of course the ceramic capacitor that we just used and oh no I got that wrong or did I no I got it right and then there's just one last uh, wire it's 56 to 64 so there's 56 it's the 10k and 64 it's the base of Q6 the final wire just completing the circuit there so that's our 10k resistor over to the base of of uh, of Q Q6. Did that just flash a lot then? I wonder what happened. Uh, I'm not sure. Perhaps you didn't see that, but I did. Uh, anyway, um, that concludes the build.
So let's pop this guy over to the bench and, and see if it works. Here we are on the bench. So um, uh, one thing I wanted to do with you just before we um, we get stuck into analyzing uh, the circuit itself, I'm just going to disconnect the uh, the CDS cell up here, um, and I'm going to connect my um, my digital multimeter across uh, the terminals. Got. Uh, One terminal there, and one terminal there. Now, if we put him in resistance mode, you'll see that the resistance is about, uh, call it 20K, 19K. Uh, that's K for kilo ohms, 19 kilo ohms just with the ambient light in the room. Now, if we throw a bright light on the CDS cell, it goes down to about 675 ohms. Uh, 675. So that's uh, that's the low resistance you get when that when it's um, saturated in light. And the, we can go to the other extreme, um, and we'll just completely black it out. Um, and when we do that, we see the resistance goes up to 1.5, 1.6, 1.8 .6, 1 uh, milli mega ohms. So that's up at a few meg, um, which is like infinity. Anything over one mega ohm is pretty serious resistance. Um, and you can see it's not really consistent, is it? It's uh, it's getting different different readings, uh, perhaps due to the heat on my finger. I'm not sure. It says actually open line there that the resistance is so high. So um, yes, I just wanted to show you that the the way the CDS cell works is that uh, as the light increases, the resistance decreases, and it gets all the way down to 650 ohms, and it goes up to mega ohms uh, in the other direction. I'll just uh, reattach the um, the CDS cell to the circuit. So that was the first thing I wanted to show you. Now the next thing that we're going to do, um, I uh, when I test these uh, circuits that use the piezo buzzer. Um, it makes an enormous racket, and uh, the only purpose for the um, for, for the buzzer is to act as a signal. Um, and an alternative to an audible signal would be a light signal. So, um, what I've done is I've I've taken some diodes and uh, and just wired in a resistor um, on the anode, um, which can be plugged in in place of the piezo buzzer. Now, these actually were made in previous videos. This is like the fifth cut that I've done um, doing this uh, video, and I've made so many mistakes, I've just had to start over and over again. So I've actually got two of these from previous videos. Um, I'm not going to um, make another one uh, with you. Um, so it was pretty simple. I just figured out um, what, what resistor I wanted to use, which ended up being 220 ohms, um, and, and the LED. Um, so, so what I did, just to run you through it, was I used my uh, Fenersi uh, DSO TC3 to figure out what the forward voltage was across my uh, orange LEDs. Uh, and the reason I did that is because I don't have a data sheet for these LEDs. I have no idea where I got them from or what their specs are. Um, now, and 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 I know that that uh, 20 milliamps is a, is usually a pretty reasonable amount of current to to give it LED. Um, so what I needed to figure out was. Um, you know how much voltage would be being applied to these things uh, in this circuit. So what I wanted to do, or, or what I did, was measure the voltage across the piezo buzzer because it's basically we're going to take the piezo out of the circuit and replace it with an LED with a, a current limiting uh, resistor in place. So um, we wanted to know what the voltage is across the piezo buzzer. So the, there are obviously a number of ways we could do that. And the first one is to use the digital multimeter, put it in voltage uh, mode, and then um, connect up uh, our multimeter, and then turn on our circuit, and turn him on. And he starts to make a noise. Noise is what we want. And we'll press hold there, and we'll turn that off there. Um, and we see that it's um, reading about uh, 4.65 volts 
across the uh, the piezo buzzer there. So that's one reading that we've got. That's the the reading from the um, multimeter. But of course, the signal here is pulse DC signal, and it's a uh, it's it, it this this 4.65 volts is some sort of average, um, and, uh, and and we can we can get a better reading if we use our uh, oscilloscope. So I'm just going to um, uh, take our channel one lead and we'll hook him up uh, here, and then we'll uh, we'll make some racket with our buzzer because we want we want to replace the buzzer so it's not so noisy um, so um, let's turn the power on there and the power on there and it'll start making noise and let's press auto and that'll bring him in there and uh, and then we'll uh, hold that stop and turn him off okay so now we've got some readings on the scope and you can see uh, just to confirm by the way um, the attenuation there is at uh, 10, 10 times um, which is is the correct uh, attenuation so um, the the, um, the 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 results you see on the screen are, are, are correct um, the, uh, the it goes from about zero volts up to about uh, nine volts and we can see that we go measure add uh, channel one v max is what we want uh, why didn't that work uh, measure add channel one V max, and we want to add uh, V min and V RMS, and then our horizontal frequency, and close. All right, so we can see the frequency of this signal is 1.5 kilohertz, which is um, what accounts for the buzzing. The tone is set as, as uh, by the 1.5 kilohertz. Uh, the RMS voltage is 6.2. Um, and the RMS is root mean squared, it's a type of average. <clears throat> the minimum voltage goes to minus half a volt um, and the Vmax goes up to 8.95 which is very close to 9 volts. So you can see that, uh, that we actually got some very different readings to what we picked up on the multimeter. So the multimeter was saying 4.6 volts um, but the, the um, the oscilloscope shows us the maximum voltage across those terminals is actually 9 volts which is uh, about double uh, uh, the 4.6 average uh, which makes about sense because the duty cycle looks like about 50-50 to me so um, you know about half seems to be on the money um, so uh, we measured uh, with the Fenersi um, thing, we, we we got the um, we got the the voltage drop across these particular uh, LEDs, and it was 1.91 volts. Um, and then I did a couple of back of the envelopes uh, on nine volts and at 20 milliamps, and that's 350 ohms. <clears throat> and then five volts um, and 20 uh, milliamps is 150 ohms. So. Um, we wanted a resistor probably somewhere within that range. Um, I figured that um, for 9 volts, which was the maximum, um, that, uh, that it, it, the maximum amount of power that, that, would, that would be uh, put through the LED is 32 milliamps at 9 volts if the 220 ohm resistor is used, which is what I've done here. Uh, and 32 milliamps seemed to reasonable enough to me. Um, and we can we can just go through. I, I mean, obviously, I've tested this by now. But um, if I just throw you over, uh, this is my power supply that I use down here. And if I V set at five volts, um, and then um, throw you back over here um, and connect uh, the power at five volts to this uh, LED, um, then uh, when we power on, we get a light. Um, and there's there's not not a particularly high temperature on that. Um, it's uh, it's not it's not too hot at all. So um, if I uh, just throw you back over here and let's um, turn him off for a minute and V set and nine volts, we'll put it back up to nine volts, and then we'll throw you over here and let's just see what the LED does at nine volts. And there it goes. It goes on. Uh, it's not getting it's not getting hot. Um, and it's it's uh, chewing up as you can see um, 
over here if you can read that it says 31 milliamps so it's using 31 milliamps of current it's tw uh, tw 270 milliwatts uh, so uh, that's that now um, <clears throat> throw you back over here so what we want to do is just um, put this uh, LED in the circuit in place of the um, the buzzer so uh, we don't need our oscilloscope here anymore and uh, if we put him in there and then take that out now let's clip him on there. So what we're doing here is just taking the buzzer out of the circuit and replacing it with an LED um, so that we can get an indication of how the circuit's behaving without having to hear all the noise. So the, uh, the buzzer is now dis disconnected. We've put our 9 volts back on and we turn this on. Oh, of course, um, I have to reattach um, power over here because I took that off for the LED. So uh, just put the uh, power back in. So there's the power and power on and then turn him on and there he is. And now if we put our high, our high light on, the LED goes off. If we take that away, the LED goes on and off. So that's, uh, that's the, the, the luminescence of the flashlight controlling the LED, which is the output of the uh, monostable multi-vibrator. Now what I wanted to show you was we just turn the power off for a second um, while we we attach some some stuff. I, I'm going to connect um, Q1 um, which is one of the uh, um, the transistors in the monostable multi-vibrator. I'm going to connect him the base of that um, of that transistor to ground and I'm going to do the same thing so the um, the the top uh, multimeter here is connected to um, Q2, and the bottom multimeter is connected to uh, to Q1, and they're both connected to the base of those transistors over here. So I'm going to put that into uh, two volt range. Here it's on these multimeters. It's marked as 2,000 millivolts. Um, and you can see, I'm not sure where it's picking up negative uh, power from, maybe the, the capacitors or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, when we, uh, when we turn the power on, and then we turn the, this up, then you can see that, um, that when the circuits are active, that there's uh, roughly uh, minus 9 volts, wow, uh, across um, Q1. And uh, oh, that's not that's uh, that's that's millivolts. So it's minus one volt and plus seven hundred odd volts. Now, if we uh, if we provide a whole bunch of light, then uh, the 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 voltages change. So you can see uh, the uh, voltage across uh, Q1 goes positive, and it's about an order of magnitude more. So when Q1 is receiving more voltage, um, the the LED, which is our signal, is disengaged. Um, when when we take the light away, what will happen is uh, the voltage on, on the base of Q1 will go negative, and the voltage on uh, the base of Q2 will go about ten times higher than it currently is, and the and the proportions will flip. So there'll be considerably more voltage on Q2 than there is on Q1 and in that circumstance the output of the multivibrator will change um, and that will drive this transistor over here which will drive our signal so we take the light away and uh, our indicator comes on um, and we see that uh, that there's um, more voltage applied uh, on the um, on the on the Q2, which engages the uh, the thing, and then we put the light back on, uh, and then that, that goes back down to a very stable 70 versus 700 
Um, it is interesting to see, and I, I don't know how to account for the fact that this voltage on the base of Q1 goes negative and considerably negative sometimes. Um, so it's quite variable, and I, I don't really understand why. Uh, I don't know if it's related to that flashing that we see on the LED there. If I uh, if I turn that down, yeah, so that's that's much more consistent, isn't it? At that uh, at that level, so um, it seems that uh, when the the um, the tuning resistor, the potentiometer, when it when it goes uh, higher, um, uh, it, it it becomes more variable. I don't know if that's because of the capacitors or, or why that really is, but that's quite stable there. If I turn this this direction, it starts becoming very unstable, doesn't it? And you can see it even flickering on and off. Um, so, yeah, lower it's quite stable and high it's also fairly stable. Um, but uh, in the middle there, it flickers around a bit. So it's a, it's I guess it's a tuning uh, problem. Honestly, I, I don't completely understand these circuits yet, but I'm hoping that with more experience, I'll I'll uh, I'll come good. Uh, anyway, I think I think that's everything. Let me just check my notes. Oh, the other thing that um, that uh, I had in my notes and, and which we've actually already covered is that um, <coughs> the uh, the frequency of the of the tone is on the oscilloscope. So we've already done that. I had a note to do that. Um, so I'll just throw you over to the um, to the farewell cam, and we'll and we'll wrap up. So there you have it. I don't know how long this video actually is because I've recorded it like four or five times in a row. Um, this was project number nine, the visitor alarm. Um, we, we took a pretty good look at this circuit. We, we played with a bunch of things. We uh, first, first of all, we in investigated the CDS cell and just showed how um, that voltage varies from about 650 ohms up to a couple of mega ohms, uh, depending on the light level. And then um, we, uh, we switched out the piezo buzzer for a um, LED thing. I don't think I get to show you in this video how that was made, but it, it wasn't super exciting. I basically just got an orange LED from my drawer um, and, uh, and a, and a, a 220-ohm resistor, and I soldered it on to the anode um, and put a bit of red heat shrink on it so I knew uh, which end was the positive end of the LED. Of course, an LED uh, has a short leg for the cathode and a long leg for the anode, and I, I figured if I attach the, the resistor to the long leg, it'll just be longer still, so that, that relationship still holds, and there's a bit of red um, uh, heat shrink there to remind me that that's the positive end of the diode. We did put 32 milliamps of juice into this thing, and it seemed to uh, cope just fine. Actually, the resistor got a little bit warm. Um, but the, uh, the LED didn't get particularly warm, so I, I think that's good enough for our testing purposes, and if I end up burning it out, uh, you know, I'm not going to lose any, I'm not going to shed any tears over, over that. So I ended up with two of these things, um, which is uh, fair enough. Um, and, uh, yeah, we showed you how the, um, the, base, the, uh, the base voltage um, into the um, into the transistors in the monostable uh, multivibrator, uh, what control the state of the multivibrator, and, and we saw when um, when when the when the voltages uh, changed, the output changed, um, and uh, and the CDS cell was the was the thing that that it's kind of like the straw that breaks the camel's back. Um, to flip the, the circuit from stable to unstable. Um, and uh, the tuning was a little bit variable. We noticed that uh, you know when it was when it was far, when it was low, uh, it was stable and when it was high it was stable, but when it was sort of in the middle you'd get a bit of oscillation there. Um, I assume that's attributable to the 10 microfarad capacitor, but that's just a wild guess. Uh, and the reason why I picked the bigger capacitor rather than the smaller capacitors is that the, the duration of the flash was actually 
quite you know noticeable it's very slow um, and a slow flash flash is consistent with a bigger capacitance so uh, I think that that flashing had something to do with that 10 microfarad capacitor but honestly I don't understand that um, I am a beginner I am still just learning so uh, there we go I, uh, I think that was everything um, yeah, and uh, and now that we've made them, uh, these little uh, resistor thingamajigs, they might come in handy in, in future uh, um, projects, so uh, pretty handy to have those. I'll just keep them in my junk box there, and if I need them, I've got them. So that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Um, if you want to see uh, the next uh, project, then uh, don't forget to hit subscribe. The next project will be Speech Conductor. Project number 10, speech conductor, and I, on the completion of project 10, we'll be halfway through our uh, sensor robot 20. So uh, looking forward to that. I'll get that video up as soon as I can. And uh, apologies for this video running a bit late. It turns out that uh, one video per day is actually very difficult to do. Um, so I'm going to try and get in, in cadence and, and, and make that happen for you. So, uh, But please bear with me uh, if there's a little bit of uh, growing pains while we get used to uh, our rhythm. Uh, yeah, so up next, uh, Project 10 Speech Conductor. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. See you soon.